Good evening, I'm James, and thank you for joining us for this special report, where we're going to be taking a deeper look into RV awnings. Awnings, they've been a part of RVing for as long as anyone can remember. And due to their ubiquitous inclusion on nearly every RV made, you might assume they were an extremely effective and universally loved part of RVing. But we found that's not always the case. Our investigation tonight starts, like so many things these days, with an online post. James and Steph, shown here, run the marginally popular RV blog, The Fit RV, where they produce an eclectic mix of fitness and RV-related content for their dispassionate followers. But their recent video review of the Winnebago Solus had some people questioning their love for RV awnings. Yep. Notice, no awning. Look at that, no awning. We love Yay! it, finally. Bravo, bravo. It's probably only because there's the pop top on there, but, <laughs> but I like that if, that there's one van you would not be forced to get an awning. Yes, that's very cool. All right, so I like the no awning. Is it possible to love RVing without an awning? RV dealers say no, and they include an awning on almost every RV they order. But what about these two? Could they be real RVers if they didn't love an awning? We had to get the rest of the story, and so we tracked down James at the Fit RV headquarters in an undisclosed location, on a private island, underneath a volcano. Thank you for having us, James. No problem at all. Now, you and Steph actually are RVers, is that correct? Yes, we are. You might have seen our RV outside. Yes, we did see that. So, can you describe for us your feelings on RV awnings? Well, they're an essential and highly desired part of every RV. Is that your personal opinion, or are you simply repeating RV industry talking points? Well, I am an RVer, and all RVers love awnings, so you'll have to draw your own conclusion. Recently, there have been some allegations that you personally don't love RV awnings as much as the industry says you do. How do you respond to those allegations? I'd call that fake news. I'd like to show you a video clip, if that's okay. Sure. Just have a look at the monitor over there. No awning. Look at that. No awning. We love it. Finally. Yay, bravo. Bravo. It's probably only because there's the pop top on there. But, but I like that if there's one van, you would not be forced to get an awning. Yes, that's very cool. All right, so I like the no awning. Now, is that your voice in this clip? I can't be certain. It sounds a bit like me. If you truly do love RV awnings, how do you explain that clip? I don't have any comment on that. Okay, let's ask about something else. How long have you been RVing? Ten years. And have your RVs had awnings? Yes, every single one. And in that ten years, how many times have you deployed your RV's awning? Maybe a dozen? Now, does that sound to you like the behavior of someone who loves RV awnings? Okay, okay, it's true. It's true. We don't really, we don't really like RV awnings. We wish we didn't have to have them, but, but everybody has to have an awning on their RV. Why don't you like them? Well, it's just, they're, they're hardly ever useful, or maybe like 17% of the time. It, it happens all the time. You get excited, you know, there's a little bit of anticipation that you're going to get some shade, and then you start to put the awning out, and the shade is never in the right place. It never gets to the picnic table. It's just this disappointment, and I can't take it. I can't put on the act anymore. I'm sorry, Oprah. We didn't get Oprah. No Oprah? Along with his admission that he doesn't like awnings, we got a startling claim from James that his awnings have only been effective about 17% of the time. To dig into this claim a little further, we brought in backyard astrophysicist James to explain. James, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Now tell us, is there any truth to this 17% number for RV awning effectiveness? Well, it turns out there is. You see, with an RV awning, the position and amount of shade each depend on two variables what orientation you're parked in, and where is the sun in the sky. And these two things taken together routinely produce what we refer to as awning entropy. For example, when parking your RV, you typically don't get to choose the direction you park. That direction is dictated to you by variables other than shade. So right off, you're starting with a large degree of randomness in how effective the awning might be. And as for the position of the sun, it's probably easiest to show that with an experiment. We plotted the path of the sun on a mid-May day, 
and used compass bearings to park our test RV 100% parallel to the travel of the sun. This meant that when we laid out the awning, it was going to be pointing directly into the sun as much of the day as possible. Then we deployed the awning, as you see here, set a chair in the middle of it, and took a time-lapse video at one frame per minute. At the end of the day, all we had to do was count up the frames where the chair was completely in the shade of the awning, and we came up with 274 minutes. And it's worth noting, though we were measuring based on the chair, if you had actually sat in the chair, your legs would have gotten pretty sunburned. But considering that RVers typically don't make use of a compass, sextant, and a star chart just to park their rigs, we ran a second test. In this test, we just parked the RV at random and repeated the experiment. And without the benefit of parking according to the sun, the amount of shade was reduced. And in this case, we only got 224 minutes of shade, and that shade was gone by 2 p.m., so it missed the hottest part of the day. And if you average those two results together, you get 250 minutes, or 17.36% of the day, where the awning might provide you some shade. There's 1,190 minutes of the day where the awning really isn't doing you any good. So, that 17% is a real number then? Yes, it is. And it's worth noting that we conducted these tests in mid-May. And of course, from mid-May through mid-July, the sun is as high in the sky as it gets in the Northern Hemisphere. But that means that 10 twelfths of the year, the results of this experiment would actually be worse for RV awnings. Fascinating stuff. But was that all? Besides their being largely ineffective, was there another reason that a semi-coherent RV blogger fell out of love with RV awnings? For more on that, we take you back to our interview with James. But it's not just that you don't usually get the shade, you know. They also, they also break really frequently. It's, it's terrifying to deploy one, and everyone knows it. Do you have any data to back that up? Well, I can give you some anecdotes from our own experience. We've, we've never told anyone this, but did you know that on the very first day we had our RV Lance, the awning broke? It was a piece of metal. It just snapped right off. It's crazy. On, on day one. Yeah, first day. I, I couldn't make that stuff up. And it's not just that. It's, we've had both on our RVs, both manual and electric awnings. And with both of those kinds of awnings, we finished driving days to realize that our awnings had started to partially deploy on their own without us doing it. That sounds extremely hazardous and scary. It's terrifying, and that, that's just random breaking. That doesn't even account for wind, which takes out a really large number of RV awnings. In fact, I can tell you that we have never been to an RV show where we didn't see at least one RV awning broken, and that's usually from the wind. I'm beginning to see a theme here. Exactly. That's why I've pulled the fuse on our own awning, and I'm going to be banding it shut with some hose clamps. I just can't deal with the deep emotional trauma that comes from playing awning roulette. Deep emotional trauma. Was this simply an exaggeration? Or was it an accurate reflection of how some RVers feel when using their RV's awnings? For more on this topic, we turn to armchair psychologist, James. Hi James, I'm glad to be here. We've just heard some claims of deep emotional trauma resulting from RV awning use. Can you shed any more light on this? Certainly. It's, uh, it's rather well known that RV awnings are infamously fragile. And when one is forced into working with something that carries such a high likelihood of disaster, psychological trauma can result. Let's say, for example, you have an RVing couple, and one of the couple is primarily responsible for operating the RV systems and keeping them running. Now, when that one is asked by the other member of the couple to set out the awning, a whole cascade of negative emotional responses can result. And this is rather similar to the five stages of grief. the awning? First, of course, is denial. This is the, oh, they didn't really mean that stage. She didn't really mean that, as the victim prepares themselves for the inevitable disaster to come. Now, this is sometimes seen as attempting to clarify the request, but it more commonly manifests as one spouse conveniently pretending not to hear what the other one has asked. Honey, did you hear me? Can you please put out the awning? Then comes anger. As the masking effects of denial wear off, the reality of the impending pain begins to be fully apparent. Now, in the RV setting, this is often taken out on inanimate objects in the RV. Then, of course, is bargaining. 
Honey, we're just going to be leaving in a couple weeks. Are we sure we need to put the awning in? They may try to make a deal with God or more likely their spouse. And besides, I think there's supposed to be a gentle breeze later. In an attempt to postpone the inevitable and the accompanying pain. Next is depression, which is characterized by sadness and regret. Now here the RVer is probably imagining having to cut their trip short because of a broken awning. Or perhaps they're imagining forward to the weeks and months that their RV will be out of commission waiting for their awning to be repaired. And finally we have acceptance. They can delay no longer, they simply have to work with the awning as it is and hope for the best. Hence James's earlier reference to awning roulette. It actually just broke. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> it actually just broke. <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, going through this cycle of grief over and over again really takes a toll on the psyche. Uh, the more successful RVers realize that it's better to just avoid the awning altogether. But a number of awning victims fall uh, prey to that uh, this RV is broken all the time syndrome, and they usually cycle out of RV ownership altogether. Compelling revelations from our fake psychologist. And we had previously heard from James that he was planning on sealing his own awning shut. But are RV awning failures really as widespread as we were being led to believe? We conducted our own investigation with some pretty interesting results. An impromptu poll on the Fit RV's lackluster social media channels revealed a nearly even split between RVers who liked or did not like their awnings. We checked several other popular RVing forums and found a number of awning complaints. And the most common of these was of RV awnings autonomously deploying while driving. But it's not just a few disgruntled RVers that have trouble with RV awnings. RV dealers themselves seem to be well aware of this phenomenon. In fact, we found Kirkland RV Sales in Washington State, who informs RVers on their blog that an awning is the most commonly repaired or replaced part on any RV. Interestingly, in spite of that, all of the RVs they had for sale included awnings. And while most RV manufacturers include awnings on all RVs, we found that smaller makers of custom vans tended not to include them. A spot check of Advanced RV revealed that only nine of the 70 or so builds on their website included awnings. And Outside Vans, another custom van builder, had not included awnings on any of the 12 RVs they had for sale. Interestingly, neither of these brands is sold through traditional RV dealerships. So, faced with an industry that believes everyone loves awnings and therefore includes them on nearly every RV made, What's an RVer to do if they don't want the limited benefit and potential service pitfalls of an RV awning? Well, there's always the self-build option. I mean, it's very rare to see a self-build with an awning because when you're building it yourself, you do a lot of research. And the people that have done that research, they just can't justify awnings. But unfortunately, a self-build isn't really within everyone's skill set. And I guess you could do what I've done and clamp the thing shut. If that doesn't work, there are products out there that will lock the awnings down and convert your dangerous awning into something more inert. I mean, but really, you shouldn't have to spend more money to disable something you didn't even want to buy in the first place, you know? I think what I really want is for the RV industry to start seeing us as individuals. We're not all the same, and we don't all love the same things. And that includes RV awnings. If you want an awning on your RV, I might not agree with you, but I'll defend your right to have that on. And if I don't want one, I don't think the Founding Fathers would have forced me to buy one. I'm waiting for the day when the RVing world declares in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day without awnings. And that concludes this special look into RV awnings. From all of us here at Fit RV, this is James wishing you good night and good RVing.
Okay. <laughs> Go. Okay. Okay, it's true.